Now, if I was a character in my book, I would like to be Raj Kumari because I love to fly in the sky. I love to see drone photography from up above looking down. I love to paint that view from above. Uh, maybe that's why I put my studio in the mountains because I like to be up high looking down on things. I think it's a great perspective to have. I think it's, uh, it's a metaphor for <clears throat> having a broader understanding of who you are and uh, being able to even look at your own mind and body and personality in a way that's very objective, that's very uh, uh, removed from the intricacies or the problems of daily life. And I think, I think authors and illustrators should have that perspective that they can stand back and make a comment on the human condition and maybe also uh, provide some wisdom uh, to those of us who are looking for another way of viewing our world or perhaps getting out of the troubles that we have in our world. Books have always been that for me. I've loved to read since I was a young boy, um, both fiction and nonfiction. A lot of my work now is in the nonfiction area, but I've written many fiction stories too. And uh, they, they are available, some of them in India and of course through Canada as well. What else have we got recently? This was a wonderful book. This is Ranga Chor. This is the Hindi version, but it's called The Color Thief. This is the most recent book, I think, in India. And I wrote it with a friend of mine, Sylvia Sukunder. We co-authored it. I did not illustrate it, but just a wonderful illustrator uh, that, did the, that did this book. You can see her beautiful illustrations of the big color thief who stole the color from the world because he was a grumpy old guy, but uh, of course, eventually has a change of heart and uh, he's changed by a little girl who actually couldn't see color at all. She couldn't see anything because her eyesight uh, wasn't working, but she did notice that that big color thief was not a very happy fellow. So she pointed that out to him and uh, helped him discover why he wasn't very happy and why nobody liked him and he had a change of heart and he cast color all over the world when he figured that out and look what he did. And look at the wonderful friends he came to meet because of his change of heart and because of his acceptance uh, of, of happiness in his life and his change of his sad state. So he was able to do that. When I was a, a young boy, I loved Dr. Zeus. I don't know if you know Dr. Zeus, but Dr. Zeus was a fellow, he wasn't really a doctor, just between you and me, but he, his name was Ted Geisel, and he was an American writer. And he started writing when the uh, publishers wanted some very simple books with very simple words for people, young kids who were just starting to read. And so he created these books, the Dr. Zeus books, and he became really, really famous. And I loved those books. I loved his creativity. And he also was an artist. So he drew the illustrations for them too. Of course, many of them now have been made into movies and are very, very famous. Uh, uh, Dr. Zeus no longer is with us, but his books live on. And I loved Horton, Horton the Who. Horton the Who, who listened to all the stories uh, that were coming from the smallest, smallest places uh, that he became uh, captivated by and was convinced that there was life in those places. Dr. Zeus had a very strong environmental bend at the very early time before it became as popular or as widely known uh, about uh, protecting our environment. So he's been a big model for me and a, a great ideal to combine imagination and at the same time to uh, explore the science behind environment and the science behind how everything in nature fits together just so beautifully that we have to be very careful that we don't go mess it all up without even knowing how it fits together. So that's a very strong interest of mine. And I enjoy walking in the mountains. I enjoy walking 
uh, through nature, through the forest. There's a big pine forest here up above my house and I love to go through there, uh, take photos. I like the light and painting the light coming through the trees, the fresh air, being able to breathe that very fresh mountain air and enjoying the health of that. It's fantastic. And I'm sure uh, everybody loves to get outside the city and into those places uh, which nature has created such a beautiful environment for. And we need to protect those. We need to stop too many trees from being cut. We need to plant trees. We need to get more uh, things that absorb the carbon dioxide from the planet that's creating climate change in our world. And that's a very important thing. And I'm very heartened by seeing how many young people now are getting involved in that. I've written a lot about climate change over the years. Um, I can show you a few books. I did a series of books on climate change, oh, I guess about 10 years ago for an American publisher called Earth Has a Fever. This is just one of them. There's four books in the, in the series. This is for Abdul Books in the US. And it's a picture book. But it talks about what we do, but the way we do things, how we farm, how we uh, put methane into the air, uh, how it's affecting people in this particular book, how sea levels are rising, and how important uh, that is that we reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the air, how important it is how we uh, farm, how important it is that we make change on how we get energy. You can see in this illustration, there's windmills, there's solar panels. We have a lot of alternatives, but people have to know about them and we have to promote them and we have to prevent the burning of coal, which is really bad for carbon dioxide uh, emissions, uh, but so is uh, oil and gas. These are things that nature made to be in the ground for millions of years and we're burning them up so fast, it's just not meant to be that way. So those storage of carbon has been put up into the air, into the uh, atmosphere, and that's really warming our planet. And now those warming temperatures are affecting uh, a lot of our climate, creating extreme climate events. We see it every year. We see the storms and tornadoes that come from that warm air over the oceans. We see the forest fires, especially in North America and the West Coast, from being too dry and too hot. We see now new terms coming out, atmospheric rivers where rain will just come all in one day, more than usually comes in an entire month and the rivers can't handle it. So people are um, being affected by flooding and houses are being lost, people are being lost. It's really an important issue. So climate change, one of my other passions. Uh, for an older audience, this is also about the climate crisis. This is for high school students, ecosystems at risk, ocean life, how it's being affected by uh, the warming climate that we're in. So how the poles, the Arctic and the Antarctic are warming at an even faster rate than the rest of the planet and what that's doing they're like our freezer on the planet and them uh, warming up is really affecting the rest of the planet. So uh, kudos to everybody who's very concerned about climate change, but even more so to those who are taking action and speaking up about it, speaking to the powers of the people who make our, our laws and uh, who run our countries, our politicians and our environmental leaders, that we should uh, make them aware that we are very concerned and we want to make change because that's the only way change gets made is through each one of the readers of my books, each one of the listeners to these stories about climate change because they are very, very real. Many people ask me, how do you choose a title for your books? That's a very good question actually because uh, it takes time to come up with a title. I think it's best to actually have a working title and then uh, watch when the book is written, reread it to yourself and see, does it really encompass the subject matter of the book? And uh, for fiction, which I love writing fiction as well, uh, how can we 
draw the reader in through the title into the world that you've created in your fictional writing. Uh, it's the same in nonfiction. Nonfiction is a wonderful field because it's become much more creative now. We're able to use stories and narrative to really interest the reader into things that are very important. I love narrative nonfiction. That's one of my areas that I write a lot on and uh, I'm, I'm writing about that now. And I think it's really uh, important that the title uh, encompasses the entirety of the subject that's being uh, written about. So uh, Light Pollution, well, one of my latest books coming out, it does cover uh, the subject of artificial lights and how they impact uh, ecosystems uh, around the world. So pollution is a term that applies to light, although we don't often think of light as being a pollutant. In fact, I'm sitting in the beautiful sunlight now, but that's natural light. It's the light that we create in the, into environments and, and project into environments and that trespasses into environments that in fact were traditionally dark and traditionally the living things in there uh, were uh, adapted to the dark light change between day and night. Those are important changes and not just animals, people as well. It's not natural to have light all night long and, and, and on human health, studies are being done now that show uh, the impact of lighting at night, how it affects some of the hormones in the human body and is now considered that it even can cause cancer for people who have to work the night shift for too long a period of time and don't get that dark period in their lives when those hormones can rejuvenate themselves, when our biological systems can get rest. We need rest to get our strength, to get a balance back in our bodies because this is also a kind of ecosystem uh, that we're living in in our body and it's inside and it's outside but it needs that rest and that rejuvenation uh, that nature knows how to do by itself this is my first book ever i illustrated it and i wrote it with a friend of mine sylvia secundar who uh, you saw was the color thief author as well and it's about also about a little elephant uh sonu and this is about logging and how uh, logging the metal elephant refers to logging machines that come and really destroy the environment for sonu and her family so it has an environmental tinge it was published by scholastic back about uh ooh, coming up to 17 18 years ago i don't think it's still in print but it was, a, it was a fun book. I often write uh, books for other cultures. This was written for a Korean uh, group. Uh, this is a book on how to learn English for young Korean children. And it's a whole bunch of stories in there. The Chung Jai Fa educational uh, publisher asked me to uh, write these stories to, to teach very specific words to their students who are learning how to speak American English. I didn't illustrate it. There were illustrators in here who handled the uh, illustrations, but you can see, you can get a sample of it here. And these are essential themes for students and keywords based on those uh, themes and how to make sentences and uh, how to attract the readers through fiction and uh, nonfiction uh, stories in the book. So that was a lot of fun working with the uh, Korean publisher. Uh, I also worked with an American publisher recently, and this is again, in this one, I just did the art. You can see there, Dr. Rich Fields, art by Stephen Aiken. And this is about meditation. And he is a psychologist. He's a PhD in psychology. This is Richard Fields. And his psychology is centered around using meditation as a therapy. So he wrote this story about a young mouse. It's called Max the Mindful Mouse, because Max is a meditating mouse. And uh, he, he shows the value and practice of meditation and what it can do in people's lives. And it's a wonderful story. This would be uh, more than a picture book, it's, it's a chapter book. So it's for slightly older children. And I got to create all these fun illustrations in it uh, around Max and his animal friends that uh, illustrated the story for Dr. Richard Fields has done very well and he does conferences on meditation and psychology and they sell this book uh, to young readers. 
one more book, and this was a fun book, The Kerala Collection, which I did a few years ago. And that's uh, written by Mary Joseph. Now, Mary is a, a still a very good friend of mine, and she's a, although we've never met, she's a psychiatrist that lives in America, somewhere down in the southern U.S. and Virginia, I think. And she contacted me about these stories. She's from Kerala by the River Periyar. And she had a lot of stories in her head that her grandmother told her verbally, orally, that were never written down. And she felt she owed it to her children and for future generations of children uh, to put these stories in print. And she wanted to publish a book. And uh, there are five different stories in the book. You can see the wonderful uh, cover there. About uh, right in the middle, you can see, yeah. Banana leaf and mud pie are two characters. Uh, there's five different stories in the book. You can see banana leaf and mud pie going to Kashi on their journey. So there's many really, really fun stories that uh, came out of that book. And that's a hardcover book uh, published uh, by Mary Joseph, a self self-publishing author. My library of books carry uh, a lot of a lot of different authors. I love so many diverse things from from science to uh, to picture books and I love to illustrate uh, and write all genres, fiction and non-fiction. So I have a big big huge uh, library of books. Now, I like to buy my books in, in ebook format just because uh, I like to save the trees. And it's much easier for me to get them wherever I am in the world just by downloading uh, the ebook. I hope more books go into ebook format and are available at very reasonable prices for readers, and that the authors are um, are rewarded uh, appropriately for the ebook versions of their books. Because I think that's an issue for authors when you when you write something, or or for illustrators when you illustrate an entire book. Um, you need to be you need to be compensated for the sale of those books. Well, when people copy them and and uh, um, they're not and no money is going back to the authors or the illustrators, then it's very hard to make a living as a creator. So I think we have to stand up for that for our authors, and I applaud um, the House of uh, Books and uh, Tales for helping to promote. Uh, the books that I've written and have worked on with other authors, because I think it's really important to get them out there so people know about them, but it's also important to buy them and to support the creators so that uh, we'll have better books when those who write books uh, can make a living from doing so. So it's a really important thing. So my next book, uh, I have a bunch of proposals in with my agent. I have a literary uh, agent based in Canada. And uh, the way it works in the nonfiction end of things is you write a proposal uh, for a book and then you put that proposal together for publishers, maybe do a sample chapter, how the book's going to progress. Uh, so I have a number of proposals out there, one for a picture book, another for a narrative nonfiction book for middle grade readers, which are maybe eight to 12 year old readers. And uh, then we just wait and see what comes back, which publishers are interested, uh, well, maybe which approach they want to take that we can change the proposal around to fit into their uh, publishing schedule. So it's all very, very exciting, I tell you. When I was very young, uh, my dad used to tell us stories from the uh, Bible, from the Old Testament. And he had been brought up uh, in that tradition. And when we would lie down at night, he would uh, give us uh, a new story every night about somebody in the Bible who had um, you know, lived uh, as a fisherman and uh, had cast his net far and wide and made many friends. Uh, and then there was Moses on the mountain who came down after having had a revelation of the truth that was needed by, by all of his followers and his community and tribe. And all these stories had an underlying uh, meaning to them. They were like parables, as they often say. And uh, that really sparked me. My imagination just spun out on those 
uh, when, when I was young, I used to really believe that I could fly and I dreamed a lot about flying and I'd fly through the air in my dreams all the time. I even tried it a few times uh, in real life when I was only seven or eight, not very successfully. I hit the ground pretty hard, but uh, I felt that inner lift from wanting to um, be in the sky and be away from it all. So when this, uh, another book, this is Pokiri Parrot, which I did for another Indian publisher. This is for Kata Books. I illustrated this book, but when it came across my, my desk, Pokiri Parrot and the Needle-Nosed Oja, it's all about Pokiri Parrot and the little girl, Rajkumari, who flies through the sky. So I thought, oh, this looks really interesting and you'll enjoy it because it, it's a trip through India to a lot of different places. Uh, the Needle-Nosed Oja obviously is not a very nice fellow, but Rajkumari successfully goes and uh, captures and re uh, recaptures her parrot, which the Oja had stolen. So, wonderful book from Kata Books. I hope that's in the library for uh, House of Books and Tales Library too. So I'm the illustrator of that book. You can see that. Art by Stephen Aitken and the, the author is Munakshi Bardwaj. Wonderful book. So if you want to get your books, you can order them, uh, I think from House of Books and Tales. They'll put all that information up. My name is Stephen Aitken. And I am an author, I'm an illustrator, I'm an artist. I love to create art and colors and pictures. And uh, I love when people read my books and uh, that uh, appreciate the um, thoughts that are in them and read them carefully and share them with their friends. I think through reading and writing and creating, we can change the world into what we want it to be. We can share uh, our thoughts and love and accept each other, the differences that we have all over the world, and yet how important it is uh, that we create a world that is in harmony, is in peace, and is in caring for each other. So thanks for listening to me today, and I uh, send uh, all my best wishes to all the readers out there. And uh, thank you to House of Books and Tales for reaching out to me to make this video for you too. Bye for now.